Uh, it's about time you show up, Matt. Uh huh. Come on, come on. We're Truth starting. be told, I think I was the first one. Oh, what time did you get to work today? Oh, I'm so very proud of that intro. How's it going, guys? Matt here with Carolina Coops. Welcome to Video Chicken, where we come to you live from Creedmoor, North Carolina, our brand new shop down here. Joining me to my left, my co-host, Kristen. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. She was already trying to pick on me, thinking I was late. No, I said to make a minor adjustment. And also, as always, we got Ingrid behind the screen operating everything. I uh, hope everyone's doing well. We'll give it a couple minutes to get everyone in here. Uh, I'm really excited about today. Uh, we have a guest speaker that we're going to talk about something that's a hot topic. And I'll be honest with you, for me, it, it gets a little confusing. It gets scary because... You know, I'm not an expert to, you know, talk about something that could be very, I mean, it could be deadly, right? Right. Well, that's why we have an expert. That's why we have experts. Yeah. And so we're going to bring her in um, in about 15 minutes. And we got Mackenzie also in the green room. We're going to go over how things are going on this week up in uh, New York. I'm hoping Mackenzie's going to be coming down here soon. I can't wait. It is Friday. So that means this coming Monday, I'm going to have some veterans coming down from New York. We're going to start building coops. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very exciting. Good. Um, so will be the smell of sawdust in here. Yeah, and it is hot and sticky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're really going to find out how these guys yep. are doing. Um, so before we get started, I did want to uh, – well, you already read it. You, you snuck this in. Uh, but Ingrid, check this out. We made the front page again. Nice. County Compass, a local newspaper. I got this in the mail yesterday talking about our return to North Carolina. And uh, just a great article there. So we'll have to subscribe to this paper. I'm assuming they mail it out. Have you ever heard of the County Compass? No, no. Neither have I. Well, that's Granville County, right? Yes. You Wake County people think you're so special. I am not special. <laughs> anyway, so, and I hope that we get to talk a little, we get an update maybe from uh, last week's rant. Yes, I have an update. Dale, I don't know how much we can talk about. There's some interesting points. I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it up to you if you're going to bring up some interesting details that you've learned. Oh, about, oh, are we doing that? Well, no, but no. I just, oh. I, I just some very interesting details. What? Like Dale, I found out that Dale is going around calling me a low life to people in the neighborhood. And mm -hmm. I've never met Dale. And I don't even know what a low life is. Like, I think, I, yeah, I'm not sure either. Yeah. And then there's I don't know a what that's referring to, especially from someone I've never even met. Right. So if you guys don't know what she's talking to. about, last week's show, we had Kristen on and I want her to kind of let loose a little rant. What's going on with her rant. local HOA wants her to get rid of her chickens and she's not allowed to fight for herself until her house is in full for full foreclosure. That's the first time she gets to defend herself. And you found out another detail about the other person. That's willing to pay personal money to get rid oh, of your Oh, yeah. Chickens. Dale's putting up his own money. Mm -hmm. um, I found out that he was trying to solicit complaints from my neighbors. Uh -huh. And they said, no, we like the chickens. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. And he said, we like, we asked her to let them loose in our backyard to eat ticks. So You're leaving out the one detail, I guess you well, don't want I, I don't know. I mean, there's been yes. so much going on. There, there's, a, there's a fascinating detail about well, one of the other gentlemen. If, you have to, if that's what you want to call them. That. Oh, yeah. I talked to the chief complaint person. And what's it? Well, we probably can't say his name. His because name's of the detail. Paul. Okay. What about Paul? He works for the FBI. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> we even got Ingrid to do a little. Hmm. See what I mean? I mean, you got the FBI but against you. I had a very nice conversation with him. And he said, you know, if you get enough neighbors to agree with having chickens, I'm okay with it. And that just, just doesn't make sense. Okay. You must not be a rule breaker. I think Ingrid's saying, all right, it's time to get going. Okay. Let's, Let's go bring Kenzie. Mackenzie in and find out the top three questions for this week. Also, uh, Mackenzie, while she was in the green room before the show, was mentioning right. to me that we got a, uh, I guess we got a coop getting shipped to Canada. I didn't know we could start shipping back into Canada. Why can't I unmute her? Oh, my God. Bring her in. Yeah. So wait, wait, we're not allowed, allowed to go to Canada yet. I don't but our know. Coops are. Mackenzie, uh, good can. afternoon. Hi. Oh, why does she always start lagging yeah. as soon as we bring her in? It drives me crazy. Know. Are you on that Wi-Fi that I know I'm paying a lot of money for to have that high-speed internet? Yes. No, <laughs> this isn't going to be a good one. You're lagging way too much. You are on the Wi-Fi? I don't know. 
don't know. Right. Yeah. I mean, we hear you good. We hear you well, I should say. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Let's try to get through it. Yeah, a little bit frozen. Yeah. <laughs> so what, well, hold on. So we, we can deliver in the Canada again. That is true? Uh, we can. So people can enter and exit the Canadian border for work purposes. Um, I don't know with recent like vaccinations and things like that, what the parameters are. What just happened was our buyer had organized shipping on his end, uh, which always kind of makes my control freak brain a little uneasy no. because I didn't do it. So, you know, it's been like, I have been talking to, you know, the president of this company, Cross Border Solutions, uh, who have, you know, hired a courier service called Cavalier Transportation uh, that has a hub in Rochester to transport this across the border. The problem uh, was that the driver came in and goes, do you have customs paperwork? I was like, no. Now, it, it's their job to get that all taken care of, not us. If they, if they set up the right. broker. Well, anyways, so, I tell you what, um, I'm, I'm happy to hear that we can finally ship back into Canada. I didn't know that. Now, that also means we can ship hemp now back into Canada. That has been another problem <laughs> this week. Um, so, okay. Well, we don't have to get into all those details. Fire away. <laughs> give us your questions. I got a tight schedule to keep today, and I can't wait to get to Fallon, our guest speaker, where we're going to be talking about... Coyotes and salmonella. Yes. And wildlife in the city Ooh. nice yeah and how it directly affects chickens right right awesome all right so far away Mackenzie. um first one easy peasy should i cover my apron so i don't run it over with my lawnmower what are you going to cover it with like they they mean like a you know to bury it yeah so here's the deal about the apron i know a lot of people don't believe this um if you install it correctly and especially use your favorite part, the sod staples, it will eventually disappear. And I would say avoid getting close to the apron with your mower until it just naturally starts to disappear. You should not have to do anything else. However, can you mow over it? Can you mow? Can you? Yes. I would be very, very scared because if you hit it and you, you know, you push one part down, pops up another you're going to be buying new blades for your lawnmower. Mm -hmm. So I would avoid it until gravity does its job. It yeah. takes anywhere from, I've seen it disappear within a month to maybe three months. And if the grass is growing really tall around your chick coop, I would weed whack it. I would yeah. not go over it with Are your you mower. Gonna raise your blades. Yeah, that's true. You could raise I your blades. I love running that's over true. things with my lawnmower. It's great. <laughs> I do it all the time. Um, <laughs> do the chickens need feed and water in the coop at night absolutely not and this they're, was, yeah they're sleeping at night so they don't need to eat and drink at night period it's just that and, simple and i would i would not put food and water in there except for in rare circumstances that should be in the run where they spend I mean, their time during the day i think it, it doesn't it probably leads in with the whole predator thing that you guys are going to talk yeah. about also um yeah. And then this one, Ingrid, I already kind of told you, you're probably going to be up with this one. Um, where can I find replacement parts for our heated water system? Um, especially on the mobile. Do it, Ingrid. Do Ingrid, it. Ingrid. 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 Okay. <laughs> Do it. Show wake up, us. Wake up. Oh, my God. <laughs> Share screen. I mean, I work, I work so hard. I tried to I give you so fair hard. warning. <laughs> I know you did, but I didn't um, know. So we're what gonna I have Ingrid bring up the website and mm. uh, left, 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 left. Nice. Boom, boom. Click right there. Let's go ahead. We'll sh and then uh, I'll, well, she's... actually, I'll I'll share it now so yes. people can see how I got to it. Yes, minimize. What is this? Minimize. Just minimize. Right. Perfect. Share screen. Yes, I got you there. <laughs> All right. I love this screen. Isn't that a great screen? So Mackenzie is still with us, and um, so how do you buy replacement parts? Shop. Go to carolinacoops.com. Up in the top left there, you oh, see yeah, shop. Oh, yeah, I have to do I have to do it here. Sorry, I keep doing that. Then you go to accessories. Poultry waterers. 
products we love and replacement parts. Oh, that's a new one. Yeah, I, I didn't added see it. that. I, I, I got some fun stuff in here. So these are all our Amazon affiliate links, but we have the um, the incubator that Kristen loved, whoa, so people whoa, can find whoa, that. Oh, I haven't seen this. The Brincy heat lamp. Wow, Ingrid is busy. Oh, I use so butter and spray. So yeah. I love that stuff. So down here we have our replacement parts. Right, the pump, the plug, the heat it, the heater. Yeah, you can't get that heater now. Well, you can get it, but it's ridiculously expensive. So you got to wait on those. That are they not back in stock? I don't think they're in stock yet um, until September. Many, how many watts, watts is that? Is that a thousand watts? That's a thousand watt heater. Mm -hmm. yeah, it could be argued that you only need the five hundred watts. No. It's oh dear! What? Don't don't I only no. Have we five hundred watts. I know, but here's what happens: it gets screwed up. Next thing you know, someone's system freezes. And they just because they got accidentally sent the 500, they didn't check for the thousand. You get in the geographical zones. Where's the cutoff? Mm. You, you are correct. You I are correct. You. Well, thank you. <laughs> but don't do it. <sighs> it's only a couple bucks more. Get, they, yeah, but if, they, if it's out of stock. Poor, poor Mackenzie's trying to say something. It's fine. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. Um, Can we go back they, to that website real quick? I'm sorry. I, this is all new to me. Go back to. Shoot. What? Sorry, I keep hitting the mic. Yeah, yeah. Just I'm get like it up, such uh, a novice. Get it, I was okay. just saying, if it's out of stock until September, people in the South may find that the 500 watt is more readily available. That is true. So 500 watt is good for 50 gallons down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. 1,000 watt is good for 50 gallons down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So you make the choice. Yeah, I'm We've okay just with said, 20. We've just said stick with thousand watt heater so hold on go up i haven't seen this well you never see our website well because uh, i'm just putting up products that we <laughs> mentioned that we use okay so what's in that bucket what in here yes right there that is um it's a it's a granular rooster booster and it has vitamins and electrolytes and you can add it to your roosters or to your chickens water and stuff like that and so you gave this the official okay. You must be. I use it. You use it. Okay, good. Awesome. I only put things on here that I or or our staff has personal awesome. experience with. Now, real quick, I know we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. um, the coop works. Is that been, is that on our website yet? It is. That's actually on as um, a regular product. These are affiliate links, and even though coop works is technically an affiliate, an affiliate, yeah. um, it's still there. So we go down to accessories, coupe accessories. Got a rope wrap roost bars. That machine's coming down soon. We're gonna start making our rope wrap roost bars down here in North Carolina. I cannot wait. So there here. she is. So and this will take you to their site. Right. But can but, I can I say one thing about that? Um, of course. I love that product, but the only issue I'm having with it is it is a. Excuse me. Hold on. I hear a forklift. I hear a forklift. I hear people not listening to my rules. All right, I'll be right back. Um, but oh, the, what I, what I don't like out. about it is it's a lot of work to go out there every night and put the covers on and then take them off in the morning. The purpose of it being a free range feeder is the convenience of having it left out in the rain. You know, when your chickens are out, they can easily feed in it, but um, that inconveniences. I, I think maybe. Oh, okay. we, well, I don't know what happened. We got. Sorry, I had to. I had to make them stop. No, okay. I know, but you got what? You didn't hear what was going on. There was major static there. I heard it. Okay. okay. Oh, I had the chills. But I don't like that. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> folks. Sorry about okay. that. We had to. So did you go get, kick some ass, Ingrid? Oh no, I was trying to be nice. I want no, the guys no. to like me. They like you. If I like you, they like you. They know the rules around here. Okay, so anyways, so that, that is a very good point. And we did want to talk more about that, yeah. uh, your reviews, your experience with it. And I think Tom would love to hear some feedback. Yeah. I think if they were like flip up and hook or something would be even easier because I don't know where to put them. I think a raccoon carried off with one of them. They oh, really? don't really snap in there that well. Rocky the raccoon's like, uh-uh. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to go hide yeah. this. This morning there was one on the ground. So it's the, mm. the nighttime. Um, so that just goes to prove if we put is, that inside the run, that's going to solve that. It would be fine that. in the run. It but it is designed to, for free-range yeah. chickens. But if they're in the run, they're not free-range chickens. Okay. And it is saving feed too, though. Oh, well, yeah, especially with the pole out. Yeah, and they can't get on top of it. 
there are a lot of great things about it. All right, let's finish up with Mackenzie. What else you got okay. for us, Mackenzie? Um, the other kind of part of that question was on the mobile site, um, people, it's hard to find the little like button in a button thing. Um, and we have a whole other slide out menu that you can scroll through and find those parts as well. Uh, I know like nine times out of 10, I'm more likely to be using my phone for something um, than to go through like such a hassle to log onto my computer. <laughs> Oh, so you're saying there's some issues on the mobile site that... Um, not necessarily, like, an issue, just it's not, like... I don't know, I think it's... That that's there. But we also know that it's there. Hmm. Yeah, and so... there's so much on our website now, which I think most people actually really appreciate, but... Yeah, there's a lot of content, and it's hard to put simple yeah, navigation... Lot especially for mobile on that type yeah. of stuff. But when, I when in doubt, guys, you can always give us a call. Yeah, and you can, doubt. yeah, you might have to do multiple clicks to get somewhere where you want to go. Right. Absolutely. That's just because the amount of information, that's right. Awesome. Uh, okay. Mac Mackenzie, was there anything else? We're coming up to 1216. We're running a little bit behind. We can't wait to get talking to Fallon. Awesome. Well, nope. Mackenzie, hope Thank you start you. packing your bags. It's coming very, very soon. Get ready. Everyone's excited to see you down here. Your office is ready to go. I'm excited. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Mackenzie. You have a great weekend. Thanks, you guys, too. Good to see you. Okay, Later. bye. All righty. It is 1216. If you are just joining us, we are live right now from Creedmoor, North Carolina, our new shop down here. And we have a guest speaker today. Yes. Would you like to do the introduction? Yes. Uh, I and, and let me give you a little background. Um, I had a uh, HOA issue and this one guy s sent out a letter to everybody saying that they should be afraid because I have chickens and they they need to fear coyotes and salmonella in their own yards because of me and the three other chicken people. So I reached out to the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission and they put me in touch with Fallon and we had a great conversation just it was just a, a few minutes but I learned so much and I wanted to bring her on today because I knew that she has information that I think our listeners would like as well. So absolutely. So I, and I want to, I want nice to, to I want to hey. mention a point. One of the biggest reasons why I do this show is it's to educate people. I'm glad you used the applause. I was hoping you were going mm -hmm. to. Um, I want to make sure that if people are on the fence thinking about getting chickens, which we obviously are huge advocates of, we believe in it, that you're being fed good, honest information right. and. I know a lot of times you guys accuse me of wearing a tinfoil hat, but I question a lot of things. Like the CDC just came out recently saying there's this major outbreaks across the country because of backyard chickens. They called out backyard chickens yeah. specifically. And here in Wake County, the same thing happened where um, backyard chickens were blamed for the salmonella outbreak in uh, songbirds, bird feeders backyard bird feeders so she had some information in, interesting things to say about that so i mean it's just i learned so much and i want to get yeah. started yeah absolutely so, so fallon thank you so much for joining us happy to be here so what's um fallon is a yeah what, what is your introduce yourself what is your name and your title and what do you do for the wildlife resources commission in north carolina sure sure uh, my name is fallon owens um i am the extension wildlife biologist for the Wildlife Resources Commission. <clears throat> and my specialty is human wildlife interactions, um, specifically the unexpected sort of uh, experiences and encounters that people have with wildlife. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> perfect uh, expertise for the show. Absolutely. How long How long have you been doing this? Uh, I've, I've been doing wildlife biology, biology research and outreach for over a decade, but I've been with the commission for about four years. Gotcha. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, now is there any particular area of North Carolina? Do you cover a certain area maybe, or the whole entire state? Uh, yeah, I, I live in Raleigh, but my, um, sort of my, my space is the entire state. Wow. Awesome. All right. Well, Please tell me, you know, I know a lot of this started with your particular situation, and I really would love, 
you know, we can definitely want to hit on coyotes, but the salmonella part, I think it, it's very scary and it's, it is very real. Um, I would love for you to kind of share with us your personal opinion on that theory that, you know, you're going to have these major outbreaks if you have backyard chickens and be scared if your neighbors have chickens, whether or not that's true or not. And of course, any maybe I would love to hear if there's any experiences that you've had that would be really good for our listeners to hear. Sure, yes. sure. And, and I want to preface everything that I say with that I am a wildlife expert. I'm not necessarily a chicken or a livestock expert, um, but because the two interact, uh, I, I know probably just enough to get myself into trouble. Perfect. Um, <laughs> you're in the right place. <laughs> we like to start well, a little that, trouble yeah, sometimes. You're, you're in trouble already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Phones Perfect. are ringing. Yeah, um, so, so when it comes to chickens and wildlife and salmonella, um, it's, it really is a situation of muddy waters because we do definitely know that uh, chickens can carry salmonella even from the egg. Um, the, the hens can, can uh, um, deposit salmonella into the eggs and then a chicken can be born from the egg with salmonella from birth. Um, so that's, it's something that's kind of, we call endemic in, in some chickens. Um, so even if you have a completely sterile um, area where you keep your chickens, you could end up having chickens that have salmonella bacteria in them and on them. And that's pretty normal just for keeping chickens, but that's not something that you should be like, no, I can't do this. This is too dangerous because when it comes to salmonella, really, you just don't want to ingest it. So that's why you always cook your eggs and you cook your chicken before you eat them because there's always that possibility that salmonella bacteria will be on the meat. Um, don't touch chickens and then stick your fingers in your mouth without washing your hands first. It's just basic sort of hygiene when it comes to chickens. I, I like so, to call it, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I want, we need yeah. to hit on that point right there. Because it, of the, the news report that you shouldn't kiss your chickens. Well, it's called common sense. <laughs> oh. It's called common sense. Or no, no open mouth kissing. Wash your hands. <laughs> you go out and pet your dog. You go maybe pick up its feces. Are you going to go eat or are you going to wash your hands? It's the same thing with chickens. Yes. There is no increase. There, unless I'm wrong. There's just, it just Think about it, people. It, there's no increase with a backyard flock to risk. There's, an increase, there's no increase in the risk from salmonella. I've never there, had it. Versus, have never had and think about it. Here, I want to I want to show the contrast, because I'm not going to beat up commercial farming. It serves its purpose. It allows our food to be very convenient, affordable. But there comes consequences. We're here. We're actually promoting people to get involved with something that's going to allow them to be even healthier. And now we got the CDC saying, "Oh no, this is going to make it worse," and it's not true, because of just if you just use common sense. Sorry. Yeah, and true. not all in chickens biz, have, have it, right? In, in the biz, we call it biosecurity. That mm -hmm. common sense is, is called biosecurity, which basically means keep your chickens away from anything that can get them sick, which means keeping them away from wild animals where there could, you know, they could get salmonella from, from wildlife potentially. And also, you know, keep your mouths away from, from chickens and uh, raw, you know, chicken poop and things like that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really just good hygiene, um, right. that biosecurity. Anybody who, who owns a commercial chicken farm really, really, really knows biosecurity. But for a backyard chicken situation, you know, you might not be introduced to that idea. But it, it really does boil down to just really good hygiene and keeping your chickens away from things that could be carrying diseases like wildlife. Yeah. And right. I, uh, when we spoke the other day, she said that my neighbors, for them to be at risk, my chickens would have to have salmonella and not all chickens have salmonella and they would have to come into my yard and eat the poop or get exposed to the poop. So they, right. and there's a good chance they could come in my yard, eat the chicken poop and not get sick because salmonella is not always there and my chickens may not have it. And so the risk of other people is very, very small unless they are pretty crazy. Well, right, and that's where I want to. I want to also be clear. <laughs> so I'm I not, think that's a low risk, but it, we've got Dale. It's a low know, risk. Know. You know, again, I, I was an exterminator. I had to. I was trained on biosecurity when we did food processing plants, from meat plants, poultry, all that. And it, it's very, 
interesting and it makes sense when you go in there. But one of the reasons why I've always knew we had to have high biosecurity, you had to sanitize. Some places, especially pharmaceutical, you couldn't go into place until you took a shower and when you left, you had to take a shower. Um, it's because the concentrations are so high. Mm -hmm. All right. Versus, you know, remember when we talked to Mr. Chaffin, my beloved earth science teacher, what, God, over a month ago. I'll never forget when he said the solution to pollution is dilution. Well, in a way, you're just in, you're decreasing the overall risk. You don't have a concentration. Now, if you had, and we preach this all the time, it's all about having the right number of chickens per coop because you don't want to overload it. If you have your 100 dogs defecating every day in an eighth of an acre, you're going to have a high potential. You know what I mean? That's what this really comes down to. Yeah. You know, and to, to tell children, I'm sorry, you know, the CDC to say, don't hug your chickens. I mean, my prince, my Jetta was just walking around. We did an interview last week, and um, part of the interview process, we have the pictures. I don't know if I shared it with you, Ingrid, or not. Um, I told Ingrid, I said, or I told uh, Jetta, I said, go bring them some baby chicks. And it was a great way to test their if they really do love chickens or not. But it's just, again, common sense. After touching them, wash your hands. Yes, yes. And then uh, what, what about that link between um, – the backyard songbirds and chickens. Do you, can you tell us about that outbreak and where you think that might've come from? Yeah. Yeah. So we had this, uh, over the, the early spring, we had this huge outbreak of salmonellosis, which is the disease that salmonella bacteria causes or salmonella poisoning, basically, um, in songbirds across the Eastern seaboard. Um, usually it was pine siskins and American goldfinches with our, which are both species that love to visit bird feeders. Um, where the outbreak originally started, we really can't say. So did it come from uh, some backyard chickens? Maybe, we don't know, but the outbreak itself being spread from bird to bird to bird to bird was most likely spread through bird feeders because it's a concentrated area where lots of birds are coming to eat in the same place. They're pooping on the feeder, they're getting their saliva on the, the seed and they're sharing their germs. So the, the extent of the outbreak we know is more related to uh, bird feeders, especially unclean bird feeders that weren't being regularly sanitized um, more than anything else. So original cause, we can't say, but it definitely was as bad as it was, mostly because of unclean bird feeders. And what do you suggest if you don't clean your bird feeders that often? Is there some other way that you could feed birds? Absolutely. Um, as a wildlife biologist who knows very, very well the disease risks to songbirds that come from bird feeders, as well as the nuisance wildlife issues that come from bird feeders, because bird seed is delicious and nutritious, not just for songbirds, but for all sorts of wildlife that people don't necessarily want to attract in their yard, like foxes, coyotes, rats, mice, squirrels, mm. raccoons, opossums, bears. Um, so yeah. because of the issues that, that bird feeders can cause, what I advocate is to actually plant native plants mm. um, to use in your landscaping and gardens, because those provide bird seed naturally, and they don't come with any of those issues that bird feeders can cause. And I might also add, when you do that, you get more plants. <laughs> so I, That's a bonus. I, have, I have my whole garden full of purple coneflowers, echinacea, and they were all came from the fact that I leave the, the dead flowers on there for the finches to eat the seeds. Mm -hmm. And they either plant them, drop them, poop them, or whatever, and now I have tons of plants. Do you so. have any recommendations for specific <laughs> plants for feeding songbirds? Uh, yeah, so if you're if you want to attract your typical stereotypical um, bird feeder birds, um, you can plant like um, as I just heard, uh, purple coneflower is an excellent garden plant. Black-eyed susans are native and they provide bird seed. Um, native sunflowers, um, and honestly, if you just let a lot of your plants go to seed. Um, whether it's grasses or, or other wildflowers or even berry producing plants, those are going to be able to produce um, a food for songbirds. So lots of plants make bird seed naturally. We just have to let them produce that seed. Oh, interesting. Okay, good. So the coyotes that we talked about earlier, you said there was some discussion. Uh, yeah. Your neighbor complained about you're he said that everybody in the neighborhood was at risk of coyotes because of my chickens. 
And can you tell us about coyotes? How big are they? What do they eat? Um, Is it true? I mean, are, are we really going to be more at risk because we have backyard chickens? What, it, what are the risks we're talking about? You know, mm-hmm. are they going to come? Take our children? Take our children. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure, sure. So to answer very bluntly the question, uh, is a neighborhood more at risk because there are backyard chickens in it from at risk from coyotes? The answer would be, it depends on how those chickens are kept. Um, coyotes are ubiquitous across North Carolina these days. Um, but pretty much, you might have a coyote sleeping under your bushes right now. No matter where you are, you could live in the middle of the city, you could live out in the county, you could live in a suburb. Coyotes are everywhere, but they're really good at not being seen for most of the time. They're they're very sly and and uh, squirrely, and they're they're just really good at, at not being noticed for the most part. Um, and they're totally opportunistic. They will eat anything that has calories, including birdseed. I've seen coyotes eat birdseed. Um, they can get into the trash. Um, they can eat insects, like out in the mountains where we're having this brood X cicada um, uh, burst. I'm sure the coyotes out in the mountains are ha- feasting on cicadas. Um, primarily though, they, they mostly eat small rodents. So your, your yard moles, voles, and rats, that's going to be like the main food staple for coyotes. And then during the fall, they love fruits like fresh native persimmons. They'll definitely eat fruits too. Um, and rabbits. So really, if you have something that's roughly the size of a rabbit and it's out in the open, available for any animal to take advantage of, that's something that could um, end up on the dinner menu for a coyote. And that includes chickens and even um outdoor cats and small breed dogs. So really, if it's a small animal about the size of a rabbit and it's not in some kind of enclosure that prevents wild animals from getting to it, that's when it's going to be at risk. And that's when you have the risk of attracting predators to your area. So chickens that are kept in in backyard situations in really good predator-proof runs and coops are not going to attract predators because they're not going to hang around for a food source that they can't get to. Interesting. And when do they feed? Do they feed only at night or do they ever feed during the day? Uh, Coyotes are mostly active when people aren't. Like I said, they prefer not to be noticed by us. So in a city, in a suburban situation, they're mostly going to be active at night, but they're definitely capable of foraging during the daytime. We are getting a lot of reports in California of seeing coyotes during the daytime. Uh, I think those coyotes, are those coyotes different than the ones we have on the East Coast? I mean, just size-wise or? Anything? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, our coyotes here in North Carolina are a little bit bigger than the coyotes are out West. But even then, they they tend to be more skin and bone than than like big beefy animals. So you can look at a coyote and it might look like the same size as a Labrador retriever, but if you actually put it on a scale, it would weigh about half as much. They kind of max out at about 40 pounds here in North Carolina. Yeah, they were, uh, we've had some customers and I think a lot of it just has to do with the development. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going into their world, if you will. And that's just another point that, you know, having chickens, again, they're trying to say, oh, you're going to draw in coyotes, where I think there is much more to the bigger picture right. of why we potentially have problems with coyotes. And, and I love the uh, point about, yes, we are huge advocates of free ranging. And I always try to tell our customers to remember most of your high pressure predators, you know, the ones that can really cause some problems, your coyotes, your foxes, your raccoons are nocturnal. It's one of the reasons why it's so important when you build a chicken coop, make sure they're in there and they're safe. And it's not just so they don't go in there, but the key word I want to make sure everyone understands. And I remember this from back in my nuisance wildlife days is opportunistic. And Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say they're lazy. I mean, they're out there working hard, but they're going to move on even with bears. You know, they're, if you give them a reason to be there, they're going to take it. Mm -hmm. But if they're like, not getting in here. Oh, there's another Carolina coop. I'm going to keep on going. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen that. It is very, very true. So it's just so important to make sure your coop is built correctly to prevent mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. So I found Absolutely. it very interesting that outdoor cats were more of an attractant 
to coyotes in my neighborhood than chickens, well-secured chickens. Oh, you must have a ton of coyotes. <laughs> I do have a <laughs> few cats. Um, few. And well, I have four. <laughs> Okay, let's, let's not exaggerate. I mean, people are probably thinking, she's got a dozen oh God, she's cats. A, well, there was a cat one day in one show that just came up across. But we, yeah. because they're all orange, we can't really tell how many yeah. you really have. Yeah. It's brilliant. But anyways, um, real quick, I, uh, I see Ingrid's brought up the comments off to the right. And, and I would love to hear if our listeners right now have any questions for Fallon. Is that okay? Sure. Fallon, I'm not sure how much time we have. And I want to apologize. My guys were not supposed to be making a damn bit of noise out there. I hope no one's hearing them. I don't know what's going on. I am not happy right now. Well, but I, I have a question for Fallon. Oh, fire away. Because people always think that, oh, if you have, if I, oh, if I see chipmunks and I'm going to see snakes and it's all like, you know, if I have, if I have chickens, they're going to, I'll have more snakes because they'll try to get the eggs or this animal. If I see a lot of this animal, it's going to attract this animal. Um, oh, if you have a, another one I had heard, if you have a pond, you'll have frogs and that'll attract snakes. And it's nothing wrong with attracting snakes because a lot of snakes are good. I was going to say, um, ecology is good. I, mean, I you, know, you, but you... people freak out about this whole idea of, of the food chain in nature. And we become delusional. We live in this fantasy world of everything looks so perfect, but you got to understand real life. You know, I just had to tell my guys here, as we're picking up and cleaning, don't, just because you see a snake, don't go killing it. You know, uh, mm -hmm. do you understand how beneficial certain species can be? So, um, I, uh, but anyways, uh, so didn't mean to interrupt again. Yeah. There, so what do you but... think about that? Uh, I, I would definitely agree that, you know, you're okay. Wildlife is everywhere. I just like case in point about coyotes. Doesn't matter where you are in North Carolina, you have coyotes in your area. That's just a given, no matter where you are. Um, we also have 38 different species of snakes in North Carolina. This is a really snaky state. And <laughs> most of those are great animals. They are amazing species. We've got plenty that don't even get over a foot, or like over a foot long. They're just tiny and harmless. Um, but of course for chickens, the biggest worry is gonna be your egg eating snakes, like our, our rat snakes. Um, and they, as, as you mentioned, they are opportunistic. Um, wildlife don't want to spend more time working for food than they have to. And if they find a really easy source of food that's reliable, they're definitely going to take advantage of that and they're going to stick around. Um, so if you're worried about snakes, best thing you can do is just make sure that where the chickens are, are areas that snakes can't get to. So, um, you know, even, even for animals like raccoons, I always recommend um, any type of fencing that you have for the chickens needs to have holes that are smaller than an inch. So your classic chicken wire is actually big enough that a raccoon can slide its hand in and pull off a chicken's head if the chicken's standing close enough to the fence. And also that'll allow rat snakes to get in. So your chicken fencing needs to have smaller holes. You know, ideally hardware, um, hardware cloth is great. Um, anything with holes that are half an inch is just going to be just going to be really great biosecurity to keep i want to i want to make a quick note we are not paying Fallon to say that she just <laughs> described such important parts of our chicken coops and that is why that is why you i don't know. even know anything about your chicken coops <laughs> it is half inch by half inch for that those two main reasons mm -hmm. raccoons and if that snake if they can fit through that chicken wire that hexagrid um you know they're there if they can they can be big enough to eat the eggs if they can fit through that so, um, yeah, prevention, don't give them a reason to be there. And another thing I always preached a lot during nuisance, wildlife and pest control is watch where we're giving them homes. Don't give them a reason to even want to take up shelter, you know, piles of logs, rocks, uh, things like that. We've even, uh, have changed out chicken coops where the floor is down low to the ground. All right. Of the hen house and rats, especially well, Norway rats, where they burrow, they love to burrow down below the structure. And we provide a great roof above them from the floor of the chicken coop. But they, so you've given them a great home. But more importantly, if they have quick, easy access to food, it's a double whammy. So you just want to make sure don't give them a reason to be there in the first place. And make sure you're identifying too exactly what you might be dealing with, whether it's mice, rats, raccoons, possums educate and understand it's not the end of the world. And again, I, I can't emphasize this enough. If you're on the fence thinking about getting the backyard chickens, this is why we do the show. 
listen to what we're saying. Call us if you have questions because, I mean, that's our number one job is we want you to get into the hobby, whether you're going to build your own chick coop or buy a chick coop from us. And this is why we love to bring in the experts like Phelan here. So do we have any questions uh, for Phelan directly? I see there's some comments there. I haven't had a chance to uh, read them. not sure if they're for Kristen and I or if we have some stuff for Phelan, especially Salmonella. Am I the only one? Did anyone else see the CDC come out and they have a picture of a – yeah, it seems like every year the CDC comes out with this article because I've been hearing it for the past three years. And maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like you can, you're more likely to get salmonella from handling like a chicken breast while you're cooking than you are from your backyard chickens. I, I, you know, I don't know. If the, I don't know statistically, but it seems like we, you know, we eat a lot of chicken and we handle a lot of raw chicken. I think the risk yeah. is greater there Just, than. Mm hmm. Just to defend the CDC there, you know, they, they're <laughs> on the idea. doctor's <laughs> end of things. So they're seeing the, the reports of people getting sick. They're steeped in the consequences of people right. being exposed to diseases. So it, they're doing their due diligence to warn people that there, there is risk inherent of handling live animals. Um, I'm sure they do even more advertising not to handle or eat raw meat without, you know, mm -hmm. um, using hygiene. But, you know, it's they're they're trying to cover their bases and make sure that right. people are aware of the risks. So I can't I can't fault them too much for that. Right. <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah, and that, that's, that's to be true. fair, to be yeah. fair. But I just want to make sure that it doesn't mean you can't have chickens. It's just common yeah. sense. Or you're not putting your family at risk or your neighbors at risk or your community Wash at risk. Hands. Right. Wash right. your hands. And, you know, this this reminds me, too, of, of, the, of the important points of the, the how much healthier it is to consume your own fruits and vegetables, your own eggs, and if, maybe if you're raising your own meat, like broilers mm -hmm. or whatnot, it's just so much healthier. You wouldn't believe what goes into some of, you know, we talk about chicken breasts and handling it, but you also, too, wouldn't believe what goes into that to make it look plump and juicy and how that's mm -hmm. not as healthy. So there's just so many more benefits to having, in this case, backyard chickens than the chance of salmonella. You know, I mean, and again, as an exterminator, not to gross people out, but then there's a lot of great restaurants out there. Phenomenal restaurants. I love that North Carolina does something I always said back when I started is show that sanitation score. Yeah. I love that North Carolina does that. New York, D.C., two of the main spots I've worked. No. And you will not believe the potential of cross contamination and the chances of you guys getting sick from just going out to a restaurant versus, again, your backyard chickens wash your hands it's just that simple fallon do you have chickens i would love to have a very small flock of layers one day but i don't yet that's a great question do you know anyone who has chickens i yeah i have several friends who have chickens and i try to get fresh eggs from them as often as i can oh great and uh, do you do you know did you know anyone with chickens like 20 years ago uh <sighs> I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know anybody. And and that was just another thing that I was. Uh, oh, there was a lot of reasons for those questions. But um, uh, the HOA that I'm working at, their covenants are were written 25 years ago. 25 years ago, I don't think many people had backyard chickens, and it can be argued that they are outdated. And that's why they usually do set to expire after 20 to 25 years. I mean, there's a lot of verbiage in there about satellite dishes you know, those big giant satellite dishes we used to have and, you know, no home based businesses because back then you had to have people come to your house for a home based business. But now we have the Internet so you can have home based businesses and not have a lot of traffic. Yeah, they're so, outdated. So, sure. yeah, I, that was just an interesting thing because I was thinking I don't 20 years ago, I didn't know anybody who had chickens. So I don't know. It's just an interesting question. The, there is a great question on there. Mm hmm. Can flies from local wildlife? It was fleas. Can fleas. Oh, okay. All right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can fleas from local wildlife carry salmonella to chickens? That is not something that I have ever heard. I think the risk from, from fleas would be uh, different, different types of diseases. Um, I, I can't even think of anything. I know with mosquitoes, you worry about West Nile virus. Um, but I can't think of any diseases that birds can get from fleas. Right. Um, but again, 
just as a precaution, you want to keep your chickens separated from your local wildlife. So make sure you have some kind of fencing to keep your chickens safe. And, the, and, the and that point... includes overhead protection. Hawks, owls, oh, yeah. they love chickens too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and that, that brings me to another question is, uh, we hear that crows can deter hawks. Mm. Can you say anything about that? Or any, is that true? And is there anything you can do to attract crows if that is beneficial? <laughs> oh. Hawks, I mean, the uh, crows can scare hawks away. They're, you know, they're very good at, good at defending themselves, especially their nests from hawks, but crows, are, can be a problem in and of themselves. So I don't know if I would want to um, attract crows to you know my my yard to deter hawks because then you have to deal with the crows. To tell us some of the th what would be some uh, of the things that would cause a problem from having crows? Oh, well, crows are very crafty. They're incredibly intelligent, and you know just like a lot of your other wildlife that might try to get to the chickens or to the chicken feed, crows are going to spend their time trying to you know, get to those resources. So um, the crows would definitely, you know, eat chicks. Um, they could potentially get to eggs and they would definitely take advantage of the, the chicken feed if they had access to it. Hmm. Um, okay. Now, I love crows. They're amazing animals, but just like a lot of other wildlife, they're opportunistic. So um, you don't want to attract them because then they could end up causing problems for you. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. And the, another reason why I love our chicken coops because huh. you don't want to give them access to those eggs yeah. um, and the feed because it's inside the run. And I'm a huge fan of crows as well. You know, I, they're by far probably one of the smartest birds. And if you can bring them in and keep, you know, they're going to defend their nests and keep those hawks away. I just love when an animal has a job to do. Mm -hmm. I, just, I am fascinated mm -hmm. with it. I just, I, I just love it. And why not use that to our advantage? Um, back real quick, I wanted so fleas, and then she did ask about flies. One of the things you always got to remember when we're talking about, in this case, say fleas, where are fleas hanging out the most? And because they're ectoparasitic, they're not really trying to feed on the feces, they're feeding on the blood. So if they're picking right. up something through the blood or on the body, and they could possibly transmit that or vector it, but that's going to be through the blood. So that, to my opinion, would be highly, highly unlikely. Flies, on the other hand, that's different, especially your bottle flies, those ones that are you know, the metallic green, metallic blue. Oh, they think about it. they're landing on some very dirty surfaces. And that's how a lot of times we get sick from food poisoning is that transfer of that bacteria. So there is a possibility definitely with, I would think with flies just in general, I'm not, not sure how specific that would be with salmonella, but definitely it would be so unlikely with fleas. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that would be something you should lose sleep over. <laughs> yeah, that's mm -hmm. a great way of putting it. Uh, what are some of the other questions? It's 11 or 1248. We got about 12 minutes left in the show. Fallon, I'm not sure if you have a couple more minutes. We'd love for you to hang out if we have a couple more questions. If not, we can. Well, Sue said, I have rodents and they travel to her garden at night. Will it transfer salmonella or other diseases by letting my chickens eat the plants that, that are in the garden? Or should she wash them? I mean, is there any risk of a chicken eating a garden plant that a rat might have, I don't know, visited in some way? <laughs> um, I mean, you know, salmonella is kind of ubiquitous in the environment. Um, you know, if you just took a random like handful of dirt on the ground and stuck it in your mouth, there would be a possibility of getting salmonella from it. <laughs> um, just like E. coli, you know, mm -hmm. these are bacteria that live pretty much everywhere out in the environment. And so anytime you put your, you know, put something in your mouth, you should probably wash it first. So, you know, the idea of, of rodents putting salmonella onto plants and then the chickens getting salmonella from that, I, I don't know how much of a risk that is, but I would be more worried about the chickens coming in direct, direct contact with the rats where they could get fleas and ticks maybe. And um, yeah, you know, I, like I said, biosecurity, you wanna keep your wildlife away from your chickens. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and, vice versa. and again, the point I always emphasize when I'm talking to people that are just getting into backyard chickens, the beauty of backyard chickens is you're actually, you're simplifying, you're decreasing the probability of these things that we read and we just assume, uh, you know, it goes along with all types of raising chickens. It's not true. We, and we hear so many, when, when we, when we would go visit, um, the city, 
when we're fighting for ordinances to help pass chickens, right, in backyards. There's always that old guy or that old person that's like, I can't stand chickens. They're going to be roosters in the smell. And what they don't understand is raising backyard chickens is completely different than what he probably had to do as a kid where you're right. going into these hen houses where there's thousands of chickens. There's just such a difference. Learn what we are talking about when it comes to raising backyard chickens, and the probability of a risk is so low if it's set up right. And again, the reward is amazing. Even just seeing your kids, there's nothing better. When they go running out, the first thing they do is go to that egg hutch. Yeah. You know, it brings us outside, and that's the whole family. It brings us outside. There's so many. It really does. It. it I think it's beneficial. Absolutely. Um, there was one other thing that I was going to ask, and that's, it was my understanding that since birds are a different classification of animal than mammals, there's very few diseases that actually transfer. Is that correct? Like we are actually, should be less worried that we have pet birds than pet mammals. Yeah, when you're talking about, and that's called zoonoses, where you have oh. um, a disease crossing from one species to another, mm -hmm. um, the general rule of thumb is the the further away taxonomically, or you know, the the um, the less related the two species are, the less likely there will be a disease that can actually infect both of those species. So the clo the more closely related, the more risk you have of actually getting some disease from that animal. Um, so human beings are mammals. So mammals in general are more likely to carry diseases that humans can get and birds being much further away from us in the evolutionary scale, just don't carry very many diseases that we can get and vice versa. You're not likely to give a disease to a chicken. Right. So the interaction between, you know, the, the rat and the bird is probably less of a concern than a bird and a songbird maybe, or, or something like that. Yeah. And, and I think in that, you know, salmonella is kind of a unique case because it's something that, that hangs out on the surface of things. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, a bird can have salmonella bacteria in its body and not be sick at all, not get a disease from that bacteria. But then if we come in contact with the salmonella bacteria, then we can get sick from it. So, um, so salmonella is one of those things that chickens and people can get, but usually chickens don't necessarily get sick from it and we can. And we can, but we don't, some, there, there's, I, we talked about it and you said, maybe I have a tolerance to it or I, I, you know, there, you don't always get it or your body fights it off if you're, if you're healthy. So it's not like yeah. a certain death situation where if you get it, you're going to get really sick. Right, right. And I think it was mentioned before, it's kind of all about concentration. Right. You know, if you get exposed to one salmonella bacterium, you're probably not going to get sick from it. But if you suddenly are exposed to a lot of salmonella all at once, then you're, you're likely to get sick from it. Uh, so I want to make sure before we finish that I see a long comment there. And I'm not sure, Ingrid, if, if we can keep failing on, we'll still be able to hear her. But can we mm -hmm. go to the comments page? I would love for, because mm -hmm. we're coming towards the end of the show, for people to be able to see the comments. And uh, Fallon, you should also be able to Read them. We can zoom it up, make it real big over here. Um, and I really love when people are making a point from their personal experience that we can uh, – like, uh, now, now I'm going to be able to read the difference between flies and uh, – thank you, Richard, for letting me know there's no noise. That just saved them. I was going to – oh, I was, oh, was livid. Anyways, um, so we go right down. There was um, yeah, yeah. Lindsay. You want to go ahead and read that? Can you just slide it over a little bit more because it's cut off on our end? Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, okay. perfect. Being in healthcare, it's also important to note that the, cha the chain of infection, just because a mouse or a rat touches something, and let's say they do deposit salmonella bacteria, it's important to note that bacteria have also have to be able to survive on that surface as well. They're typically fragile when exposed to temperature, dry environments, and aren't very conducive to bacteria thriving. So the conditions have to be right for bacteria to, to take hold. Fallon, do you, do you agree with that? Absolutely. Okay. That is an excellent point. Thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's what we're saying. It, it's how you're set up. And the thing, again, in, in factory farming, I, I'm not trying to beat it up. It has its point. But the downside is it is highly concentrated. The concentration is just so abundant that it creates an ideal situation for us to have major health potential risks versus, again, the solution to pollution is dilution. 
You know, it's just you don't want to overdo it. So a few backyard chickens in a well-secured area with the proper coop is, it sounds like really no risk to others in the neighborhood, let's say six acres away, 400 <laughs> yards away, 410 yards away, Dale. There's no, there's no risk to Dale. He doesn't even drive by my no, house. They so he just can't don't even like get it on his for tires. Some so there's really no risk to other people if you have well-secured chickens, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd agree with that. And you're more at risk by having outdoor cats or a bird feeder or trash cans, um, something like that. Yeah, any, any type of food source that's out and available for any wild animal to take advantage of is going to attract all sorts of wildlife. Oh, but if the food source food is well contained yeah. and, you know, there's good hygiene and, and you know, the it's a clean environment for the chickens and they're kept away from other wildlife, then, I mean, you would have to go into the coop and touch the chickens and, like, stick your hands in your mouth to have any kind of risk from them. I will be watching out for that. <laughs> <laughs> all righty Fallon we're gonna wrap it up here Fallon thank you so much yeah uh, this was amazing thank you, you so much I learned so much even more we, this time we I love it time. I hope um, uh, maybe sometime down the road we can have you back on especially as people this will go up into a podcast and more people have more questions and comments and I love just how simple you were able to put it the experience you have and I'm sure I speak for all our listeners and viewers they greatly appreciate yeah, it thank it, you so much a lot of common well, thanks sense thanks for having me yeah yeah thank you and uh, if when you want chickens let us know yes we'll hook you up yes awesome <laughs> thank you Fallon thank you Fallon thank you have a great day so that Take was care. Fallon, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That uh, was awesome. Yeah, that was cool. I love the experts. I love the experts. And especially when it's not just me saying it. Like, right. I, I couldn't believe she even got down in the detail with yeah, the half-inch half hardware inch cloth. cloth. Um, so I see there's a lot of questions and comments. I, I uh, We got three minutes left in the show, but I would love to see, you know, Ingrid, you're scrolling through them. I'm not sure if there's anything good. I don't want to miss out on some things that are listeners and viewers especially if there's anyone you know we have some people that are repeat which i love uh if we have any new ones they were saying that fallon looks like jodie foster yeah she does um is that um silence of the lambs uh -huh. yes <laughs> clarice <Yeah. laughs> um here's kyle I, if i get three silky chickens and two legerns to raise together should i feed them all a high protein feed this sounds like one of those math problems <laughs> Take three it silkies does. and two leghorns. Well, the first problem is the three silkies. And yeah. the two leghorns. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Um, That's an interesting mix right yeah, there. Yeah, it really it is. is. He's probably getting leghorns for the because they for the eggs. Because um, the silkies, good luck. Yeah. So he, he went to two extremes there. He went to like, okay, I only care about eggs, so I want this chicken that might be not a great pet to, okay, I want these pet chickens that are not going to really lay me eggs and are going to be maybe a little bit more difficult but we'll go broody for you they will go broody <laughs> so if i were him i would i would probably throw in something in the middle as well or should if he get feed the them a horns, high protein feed oh That's sorry I'm, I'm 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 like second guessing his selection yeah, here so, oh sorry sorry and if you get a leghorn i like the brown ones better than the white ones um the, it depends on what you mean by high protein feed. And I how mean, old are, they are. Are we talking yeah. about the game bird feed that you use for quail that's 30%? Or are you talking about what is appropriate for chick feed? All so right, right. Okay, I, I so would definitely just go with the chick feed. Just yeah. Go with the chick feed. Go with the chick feed that's already going to be high in protein because they're growing. Long. I mean, my answer was way too long. But Why no, did that, you kick me? I, I, I didn't kick you. No, you should have kicked me. No, it's fine. It's funny. But um, so... <laughs> go with the chick feed chick when feed. in doubt you know yeah. whether or not you want to do medicated non-medicated you can get into all that find your favorite food source but they need protein to help I, I them grow i did find out that too much protein for chicks can kill them yes if you overfeed them with male mealworms you know something like that they actually can die so yeah, everything that, in moderation everything in moderation okay so look at this one the painted lady 22 which leads me to the question how many here wash their fresh eggs or leave the bloom on them. You should always leave the bloom on. Leave the bloom Don't on. Don't wash your eggs. The eggs are Don't perfect the way 
they already come out naturally. Yeah, even if they are dirty, I would just I would just wash them. Yeah, you know, like Steve and Letty said, just just before eating. I mean, sometimes you don't want to display those if they're dirty. Maybe you don't want those on the counter for everyone to see. But just... and definitely if you wash them, which we don't want to, but if for some reason you want to wash them, stick them in the fridge because yeah. they're going to get bacteria on them. Because the right. bloom has a purpose. Tell us, Matt. Well, okay. Well, the bloom is obviously there to protect the bacteria from ever getting in anything that could harm the eggs. But here's the point I want to make. And listen, I love this country. I love America. But we are so dumb in so many cases. We make things so much more difficult for us where. We insist when we go out and buy produce, or in this case, eggs, that they got to be perfect. They got to be bright white. They're not. So many people don't even realize you got brown eggs, green eggs, blue eggs, whatever. Um, if you have the right setup with a chicken coop, the likelihood of your eggs being dirty are next to zero. So you do not have to clean them. But so many people think, well, what do you, you got to put in the refrigerator? No. The reason why we have been conditioned to think that we got to put eggs in the refrigerator here in America is it all starts with what we were just talking about. You go to these large egg farms and they are so dirty. The risk of, I mean, they got feces all over them. They're just, they're abs it's dirty and the risk of salmonella. So they got to go through and they got to wash them. They got, and then as they wash them, not only are they stripping that bloom away, they're using products to clean it. that are now getting into the eggs. So now the eggs are not protected. So now we have to refrigerate them. And then to take things worse, I used to see this all the time in the restaurants. It is disgusting. I would go in there in the morning when they're, you know, especially like a diner or whatever, and they have those big flats of eggs. Yeah. And they're going to be cracking on whatever this and that. But under the ideal conditions, bacteria can grow very, very fast. You take these flats out of the refrigerator and you bring them into this hot, hot kitchen. When hot and cold meets, you get condensation. And now you got all this condensation sweating all over these eggs. And I guarantee you, I've never done it, but it's just one of the reasons why you don't. Uh oh, here we, we, we had a chance. We went so long without good goods. Where's the baby chicks? It's one o'clock. I guess it's time to go. But I just want to make a point that the reason why we think we have to refrigerate the eggs is, has nothing to do with what the chicken has already figured out for us. It's because we are trying to make it so that eggs are cheap, inexpensive, and look good. So um, I would love to talk more about that because I think that is such an important subject. We got a couple more minutes, right? Do we got some more comments? There was a bunch of them that came in. I don't want to miss any. Okay. I know Gus is in you here. Get a chick, Jetta? So how? Bring us a chick. Oh Teresa. yeah, bring a baby chick. Bring us a so that Gus, I yeah, need to here cuddle. we go. Wait, right, here's some questions. One, one here, bring, bring the comments page back okay. up so people can see the comments. I like that page. They've been seeing this. We might need to change that. Yeah. So it it really does how, go back to you know common sense. Just had to get a baby. Yeah. How Gus. to keep how to keep rats from the chicken coop and run. I have a wood floor in my chicken coop, but they try to chew into it. They even dig under the wire around the bottom. And they even put the wire straight down. Oh my God. Look at the size difference. <laughs> um, holy cow. Chris, Kristen, what is that big one? Is that a Moran um, mix? Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely a Mar It's a standard size Moran mix. And then this one is, I'm not sure, this is from Mark. Uh, Little bantam. It's All right. Well, bantam. real quick, real quick, while we're playing with it's baby chicks, an and, and Gus game. is like, oh, I do want to see one. But this is the one that's oh my goodness! To oh, the here's the one that has a oh. top hat. Well, um, that's a bantam too. This a... So I would love to talk about that because we have videos showing why you 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 have rats around your chicken coop. But again, just like we talked about earlier, if there is food readily available. They're going to hang out nearby, especially if you're giving them a good harborage area. Now, there is a difference between your, your Norway rat, which is the most common rat you see in the United States, versus a roof rat. So I don't want to get into all those details, but I would love if we can maybe answer that in greater detail next time and maybe okay. be able to bring up that video. But here's the thing. Pests in general, don't give them a reason to be there. And if they are, if you have high pressure, like immediately when they start saying they're chewing into an area they've learned the foods there and you also have a very high population so reduce the population figure out why the rats are there figure out where they're living too and here's the other difficult thing about rats um they their territory is a lot bigger than say house mice a, a mouse can live on a pallet and, and 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 survive believe it or not if it's just full of food rats have a much larger territory but they have to drink water so keep that in mind every every day they must have liquid water Eliminate their water source, and you will decrease the overall population. Okay. <laughs> do we have any more questions? I would love to go back to that one. I want to do a whole... Would you like a little kiss? Oh, uh, no. 
Crumbles or pellets? Pellets. I think crumbles are good for chicks and then switch to pellets when they get older. Okay, why? Because crumbles are smaller and chicks are smaller. It's easier for them to eat. And then pellets, there is tends to be less waste. Exactly. I couldn't agree more. For right. for hens. Yeah, yeah, let's go let's rifle right through them. Let's see how fast we can we gotta practice answering questions. Um like a game show. I know, but... Good to know about the potential. All right, I'll do it. Something else I learned today. Like 24, leave bloom washed on before eating. Yes, leave the bloom on. Leave the bloom on. We talked about that, which... Wait, I'm going back up to ones we didn't okay, get. Okay, I just realized Fallen looks like Jodie Foster. I, yeah, Clary's. Um, what the... is the best approach to hanging hardware cloth? Stapler or no stapler? Pneumatic stapler. Ooh, I'm about to teach the guys how to do that. I, by far... 18 gauge, quarter inch crown, one and a quarter inch leg, pneumatic stapler, stainless steel, and it's how you shoot it in and how you you want to cross the welds on the hardware cloth. Do you want to cross at the corner or at the? Yeah, I call it well the intersection, the, the crosshairs, the where they weld. Okay, where they where, where they, they weld. Cross. How often should I clean my bird feeder and clean the bird feeder with what? You should clean it with just like a disinfecting soap and like a soap and water. You should, like that was what was happening in the spring. People were like, there was a big thing about the salmonella, and people leave their bird feeders. Nobody I, thinks I to never clean them. I heard that. Nobody yeah, it thinks... was on the. Yeah, Dale sent that the link to the local article. I didn't know that somebody was making the association of backyard chickens. Um, but she actually told me on the phone that it was more due to um, there was a bad seed crop. Um, elsewhere and the migrating birds didn't migrate where they usually do so it was more of a okay well they're not traveling they're staying and this is more of a situation with um really just just the um the growth of the of the food source more than it is certainly more than it is chickens and then backyard feeders. Just want to see if this little dude had something to say. Um, I don't I see any ruse yet. I don't see any evidence. No, of... I don't see any either. All right, so let, let's fire away. Let's fire away. Let's let's well, see what I, we got. I, no, no, no. It's fine. Things. It's fine. Just we scroll, went scroll. Those. No, uh, no, we haven't. So, uh, blah blah. And I just I want people, everyone, to be able to see it. I loved her point that to plant things, and yeah. I know you did too, Ingrid. Because if you didn't catch that live show we did at Ingrid's house, that was pretty good. I just read on my local South Carolina crazy chicken. Facebook page that adding lots of black chickens to your flock would also deter hawks, assuming hawks will think they are crows. That's an interesting idea, but I would think that hawks are smarter than that. That is so but interesting. It is, but I, I know that they're having white chickens, those are more of a risk because they're right. so easy to see. Oh, that's a good point. Well, and I know, so in Central Park, there used to be a lot of black squirrels. You know, oh, be, yeah. But then they weren't because they were easy prey because they stand out beside, you know, the, the, the gray squirrels are camouflaged. Right, blend in better. Right. So the hawks were picking those out. And so, that makes sense. I mean, they're, they're going to go for what's easier. Okay. Right. Okay. What else we got? Let's, let's see if we can get through some of these. Crows and magpies will eat the eyes and tongues from lambs and they are being born. I have no idea what that's talking about. Crows are also rip up lawns looking for grubs. Yeah, that's true. I have lots of birds coming to my bird feeder. It's a new one and keeps squirrels from getting any seed. Wait, I want to just tell Sue Malloy that grubs turn into Japanese beetles. So you kind of want the crows to get the grubs or something to get them if you don't have chickens. There's biggest risk. There's a bigger risk from wild bird poo. Right. Again, that's just what I want people to realize is, we, we read and, and why wouldn't we want to listen to CDC? Why wouldn't we want to listen to the people that we trust? But I'm telling you, always go to the people that do this every single day. Educate yourself and use common sense. Hi, from California Bay Area. Coyotes are often seen in the San Francisco neighborhoods. Oh, absolutely. There's coyotes everywhere. And I don't know if they're mountain lions. Yeah. I don't know if they're... And I thought it was interesting that... Um, Jetta! Jetta! Yeah, Jetta, you left us hanging. What's Jetta. going on? What just happened? I don't know. Uh, uh, you... Jetta. I don't want Gus to. Gus, Gus seems really Gus interested. Is... He is being such a good boy. He's on so guard. So Kathy oh, asked yes, how, um, how but... old are pullets when they start to lay eggs? It's about five months, but it depends on what time of year they were born. And the breed? And the breed. Um, the other wildlife biologist that I talked to said he had never seen a coyote bigger than 33 pounds in this area in North Carolina. Which I, I was like, oh, I didn't realize that they were so small. Right. Um, and she said they could get up to 40, and they were usually skin and bones. Yeah, they are. 
you you think that they're gonna be like a wolf if you yeah. don't ever see them oh, and they yeah, yeah they're super I, lean they're yeah nasty yeah but they're they're not like a wolf or you know they're they're pretty scrawny as are loud loud at night that's for sure yes yeah. we have so many coyotes at our farm in New York bears same issue in UK with foxes. I'm having a rat problem, and they are digging under that it. Was we the same definitely, that was you know, the same we talked one. yesterday that we got to spend more time prepping these shows, and I has, it has been a dream of mine to really focus on pest-related issues. And some. I think uh, a lot of people, I would love to even be able to bring them on, showing us the uh, situation that they might be having. So that's something for the future, because it's not complicated what's going on. But anyways... If chickens are subject to respiratory conditions, shouldn't diatomaceous earth be avoided? That's the whole thing about the dust bath, too. Yeah. So, uh, again, diatomaceous earth, it's ground up crustaceans. You breathe that in, it's not good. Okay, we use diatomaceous earth a lot with insects because they have that waxy cuticle and it acts as a desiccant. It cuts up that waxy cuticle, they dry out. Okay, so yeah, don't breathe that in. That's not good, and it's probably not good for your chickens either. However, chickens love to take a dust bath. So maybe, maybe chickens know to hold their breath real quick because it is a fascinating material that they can use to do their own control of, you know, like say mites, for example. I use it, but I use it when I make a dust bath. It's, it's mostly dirt and then a little bit of fireplace ash and a little bit of... Diatomaceous earth. It's, right. You don't like you don't. You right. Don't do and a like lot of people too also think, well, you got to use food safe. That is true. You got to look at the ingredients. You got your active ingredients and your inner ingredients. So look, make sure you pay attention to what else is in there. There could be some other stuff that isn't exactly that harmful, but be aware of it, especially on the repellent side. Um, and be careful when you're using it that you don't breathe it in. You but. do not want to breathe in that stuff. I, it's not fun. I can't imagine how much damage I've done over the years using it. But hey, Matt, love your Carolina Coops. Any chance you could reward your viewers and subscribers with a plan? Yeah, everybody wants their plan. I know they are. I promise. I promise. Somebody I promise. Somebody from Honduras messaged me wanting plans. They they are coming. We just finished clearing out a gigantic shop. You guys are going to see a lot of behind the scenes. Um, and my goal is that we are going to film step by step. We're even going to start at the lumber store. All right. We got permission, possibly maybe a sponsor coming up that's going to give us permission to go into their store to even know what lumber should I get? What should I look at? Where should I use it? Things like that. Um, there will be plans coming. They will be for sale. Uh, I, I know one time I mentioned I might give them away for free. That still could happen, but I doubt that. Uh, there's a lot of other things going on that I can't speak about. Uh, speaking of hemp, is there an estimate date where you expect to be shipping the horse bedding from Chicago location again, or is there a solution to the... What is going on with the bedding? I almost feel like this is where I need to bring Mackenzie or Nan it's, back It's just in. shipping out of New York right now. And we have a container coming to the Carolinas. We may have just figured out how to ship it a lot cheaper from East Coast to West Coast. As far as horse bedding, I tell you, I can't make everyone happy. I'm trying. The horse bedding is a larger particle. You're going to have less dust, but it may not have the same absorbency, but it still does an amazing job. I can't imagine you're ever going to tell the difference. And then I got other people that want the Aubie chick. And the last thing I want to do is try to stock both. And that's just going to cause even more problems. You should meet in the middle and just go with the... The medium size one. Yeah, that didn't is... we have them doing a mixture for us? All right. All right. Truth be told, <laughs> what I am working on is finding an American company. It's just not to the level here yet, but it will be. And we're going to settle on what I believe is going to be the best size, not only for absorbency, you know, you got to have the efficacy of it, especially in the deep litter system, but also what we have learned the larger the particle, the less dust you're going to see. But it doesn't mean it's harmful. I would want more absorbency and less than than less dust. If it were me, right, I would which is the obby check. Yeah. All right, Nan, do you want to come in here, fill us in on uh, what's going on with hemp? No. Okay, never mind. She just, I just, okay. So we can move on. Well, I think the guys want to work, and now it's it's. Clear no, no it's okay. Now it's one o'clock. I know they can go back to work. Okay. All right, we got to end the show. Pretty much, I'm being told end the show. It's time to go. Sorry if we didn't get to your question comments. Ingrid, Kristen, thank you for showing up today. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. You're Again, welcome. thank you, Fallon. 
What a great interview. I absolutely love that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, thoughts, comments for future shows, please leave the comments down below. Uh, and even if you are watching, you know, today is June. It is hot today. It was June uh, 11th. June 11th today. So if you're watching this show on June 12th or later in 2021, it is no longer live. But anyways, thanks, guys. Thank have, you. Have a wonderful weekend. I'm very proud of the outro as well. That was good. All right, yeah, I got people that want to work, people that want me. Good job, guys.